Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and I'm so happy to be with you here today. I've actually managed to be like one minute early, which means probably when y'all are jumping on, I'll already be here. So this is a good thing, and um, I'm actually ready to go. Hey, Jana, so good to see you. Hope you are having a good beginning to summer. I think today is the first official day of summer, if memory serves me. I think it's the 21st, and maybe that was yesterday. Anyway, I'm a little back to front on days. Hey, Linda, I'm glad you're here. So I have some fun things for you today. Of course, the big news right now in the world of stamping is that Stampin' Up! is giving us one day only, which is still plenty generous, free shipping. And uh, so that is Thursday, this Thursday, which I'm pretty sure, yeah, today must be the 22nd, it's the 24th. And um, so, hey, is that uh, Valerie? Hey, welcome, welcome. Um, so yeah, free shipping on Thursday. Now, if you're a demonstrator, you're already getting 20 to 25% discount, and then you add that free shipping, which is typically about another 10%, so we get huge savings. And um, if you're not a demonstrator yet, you wanna really be thinking about that and considering joining my team, which consists of happy shoppers, people who just love our community, and people who are building a business as well. Uh, we welcome all. So I'm so glad to uh, see we've got a bunch of people jumping on. But yeah, Thursday is the big day of free shipping. And so that is on orders of $50 or more. So um, on a $50 order, you would be saving $6.95. And on any other any order above sixty nine dollars, you're saving ten percent. So it's it's a nice chunk of change. And there's so many things on the last chance list that are reduced in price right now, in addition to our clearance rack. So I don't know any other bargain lovers out there. Um, that really makes a difference for you. So it's also a great time to stock up when there's free shipping on the things that don't ever go on sale, but you always need. Things like basic white cardstock, things like your basic white envelopes or your very vanilla envelopes, things like your adhesives. Um, so I like to grab a hold of those when I can. Now, I will say later on in the summer for a lot of us, typically in August, we do get a um, tax-free holiday and our adhesives qualify for that. So that's a savings of tax, depending on where you live. Um, that will save you, you know, a fair bit. But there's a ton of things like that. You just your kind of everyday staples that you always need, like a black ink pad, um, things that uh, don't go on sale, things like blocks. If you need a couple of extra clear blocks, the, the free shipping is a great time to do that because I don't know about you, but I'm a lazy stamper, definitely confess to that, and this is why I loved our wood, our wood stamps for so long. A bit of a bear to store once you get as many stamp sets as I have, but I do like being able to just pick up the stamp and stamp. So that's why when you have multiple blocks of the same size or of similar sizes, it makes your stamping um, session just go a whole lot smoother. So I am going to, I've got lots to share with you. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera down. We're going to do, it's Teach Me Tuesday. I've got something to teach you today. We're gonna to be using some dies that are on the last chance list. So that means they are in the January to June mini catalog. And that means they are retiring at the end of this month. So let me go ahead and bring the camera down and then I will catch up with your uh, comments. So let's see where we can find you. And I will bring this out right away to just kind of show you that's actually not what we're stamping with today. <laughs> no, uh, not trying to tease you with that, but I did want to show you that it's one of the many things that are retiring, okay. Faye is here from Virginia, and Kay and Melissa, hello, Sarah, hey there. And Linda, I already greeted, and Valerie, so welcome, welcome. You know, it seems like that 
lighting is a little bit harsh. So let me just try something here. Sometimes y'all see it a bit differently than I do. So let's see if that helps. I'm not sure if that's any better. I think it might be. What I don't want to do is have everything so bleached out that you can't, you know, effectively see it. So um, what I wanted to showcase for you today before I start stamping is a couple of things that are on the last chance list and they're also greatly reduced in price. Hey, Susan and Marlene. So this stamp set, I actually did a, um, I did a class with this that was part of a stamp camp. You can still get the PDF tutorial if you are interested in that and it's just a $12 fee. Um, this is one of our Million Dollar Achiever stamp sets and I fell in love with the artwork on this. So let me just show you, you know, I tend to be a little bit averse to coloring, although I'm gonna be coloring on camera today, which is something I rarely do. But these are the cards that I did. And one of the things I wanted to showcase for you is that this designer series paper is a specialty paper and it's half off right now. So instead of being $15, it's only $7.50. So there are three colors and designs in this paper. There is this Blushing Bride. There is this Sahara Sand, which I love this image of the grandpa leaning down to the grandchild, which could easily, you could easily make that to a boy or a girl. And then there is also, oh, so this is actually, this is not Blushing Bride. I think this is maybe like Blushing Bride or Petal Pink is what they call that. But look how nicely it pairs with the Cinnamon Cider. And then um, there's also this shade, which is technically Rococo Rose, but look how nicely it pairs with the petal pink. This was my, this was probably, mm, it's a toss up between these two images, my favorite image in the stamp set. So I managed to make three different cards. One's a fancy fold without having to color anything. <laughs> Here's my fourth one that showcases, um, the Sahara sand paper and also uses the other thing I wanted to show you that's on half price that's part of this suite. So let me finish this and then I'll show you that. So this class you get these four card um, instructions because I only have the instructions now the class is already gone. Then we made this little um, this little favor box which the joy of grandchildren is measured by the heart. It's a really nice, super nice um, greeting. And then I had also this little favor. Congratulations on your newest little treasure. This honestly can go for a parent or a grandparent. So this is, a, I think, good for baby showers and things. And yeah, uh, Gail, I, the book fold is one of my absolute favorite folds in general. So these are the projects that you get on that PDF tutorial. It is for Treasures of Life if you're interested. But what I'm really wanting to showcase is this designer series paper that's on half price, $7.50 for this roll of this whole you know set of 12 by 12 papers. But part of this collection is also the paper that I was working with last Tuesday for Teach Me Tuesday. This these foil sheets are also on half price. They're only $5. And you get these two colors plus, this is, I think they call this, um, I think they call this Petal Pink and Rococo Rose, I'm not sure in the actual. And then you also get this very neutral um, Sahara Sand uh, foil sheet. So all those foil sheets are on sale for half price. Again, $5 for that, $7.50 for this designer series paper. I think it's a great deal. And, um, I'll show you just, I have a couple more samples with this paper just to kind of give you some other ideas with it and why I think it's such a good buy. So this was a card I had made um, just when I first got the paper. You can see how you can use any stamp set with it, but I do love it with the cinnamon cider. I think it's just really lovely. And this is using that, this is also on sale for half price, this beautiful pink and gold ribbon. Um, Here's another example of using two of the different papers for a very subtle, very pretty look. And um, again, there's that gold and pink ribbon, which I believe is also part of this um, suite. And then here is, again, the same um, pink paper. 
And then the Sahara sand one, those seems to have been uh, maybe the most easily used or the most readily used. Look at this one, using two different patterns. So I just wanted to, you know, I'm a bargain hunter, and so I always like to show you the things that are super reduced, and these are super reduced and excellent value, really beautiful products. So I think they'd be great to add to your collection, put them on your wish list, and then Thursday, um, make sure to use my host code, unless you're already a demonstrator. And then you'll also get free shipping as long as your order is at least $50. Oh, I've got one more thing to show you with those foil sheets. Oh, but wait, there's more. So these are the foil sheets that I used last Tuesday on Teach Me Tuesday. We were learning how to use this um, beautiful, beautiful um, magnolia embossing folder. Well, I used those same three sh foil sheets for my in color club this month. So this is the pink sheet. Look how different it looks when you put it with the Fresh Freesia. So this is my Fresh Freesia card. This is my, um, what's, the, what's, the new, what's the new green? It's um, soft succulent. So this here I used the, um, this is the Sahara sand foil sheet. See, it's much softer than silver. It just has that little bit of warmth in it. So it goes so nicely, excuse me, with the um, linen thread. And then um, here it is. Here I used the pinky one with the polished pink. So here it is with the polished pink. Here it is with the fresh freesia. See how it kind of picks up the purple shades here? And here it picks up the pink shade. So I think these foil sheets are super versatile. Um, this is the peachy orangey one, and I used it here with the pale papaya. And then here, this is pro probably my favorite, but I love this evening evergreen. And again, I used the Sahara sand foil sheet to pick up the evening evergreen. So these are for my uh, in color club this month. So anyway, that is, you get those sheets for $5. I mean, yeah, what's not to love about that deal? Okay. Let me clear my space here just a wee bit. And we are going to stamp today. And I'm even gonna color. So let me show you where I'm gonna go. I'm pulling out Vine Design. This has been a favorite bundle of mine through the duration of the January to June mini catalog. I actually ran a stamp camp around this. And I also did a class around it. So I'm just gonna kind of refresh your memory, or if you're new here, show you my class project so you can see. Um, the, the couple of things I'll tell you about this bundle and why I think it's a great addition for your collection is I love the, the stamps, the simple kind of bold graphics. Love, love, love this font. But then there are gorgeous, gorgeous dies. So you get this large circle, large oval, and large rectangle with all of these intricate flowers and leaves. Really nice to work with. They come out very easily from your die cutting machine. This is a great label, and I'll show you how that's used. And then, of course, these you can nestle and add in to your uh, projects as well. So this was actually my Cards with a Twist class I'm thinking maybe it was like January, and I also featured the um, the pearlized paper, which I did these die cuts with the pearlized paper. So you can see, you get these little individual flowers. You also get, um, you know, the big die cuts. So here again is the little individual flowers. And you know how I do my cards with a twist. You always get two each of four designs, but there's a little twist with each set. And then this one uses the circle. And here is that really nice label die. That label is really nice. So here's the circle with a circle behind it for contrast. And here's a circle without it behind it. Uh, oh, Valerie, thanks to me, you had to, you had to purchase that Magnolia embossing folder. I'm glad I was able to enable you. <laughs> And then this one really showcases the stamps without the dies. I mean, I did use the little label die here, 
but this shows I love this branch stamp. It's just so pretty, and I think it, this is a this is one of my favorite ways to use this. Is I think it makes beautiful sympathy cards. And you can either use that with a more feminine, but you know, a lot of times I need a masculine sympathy card because it's for a man. And although we take flowers to funerals, this to me looks very feminine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, well, it's not the congratulations, but if I had with sympathy on there, it's a little bit too froofy for me to give, you know, for a man that passed away. But this kind of hits all the right notes for me. So that is one of the classes that I had done with this. So let's see where we're going to go today. What I'm gonna to do today is I am, first of all, going to take a piece of the thick, uh, thick basic white, and I'm gonna run it through on the oval. I'm gonna take the oval and run it through. Now, I'm living dangerously here because I forgot to bring my dye brush over here. So let's see how I get on. Probably have to run over to my area where I keep those things and grab that brush. But let's see. Now, you might wonder what I'm doing here with this. I keep a set of just little, you know, thin pieces of paper in my drawer drawer by my where I keep my die cutting and I use that when my cutting plates look like this when your cutting plates look like this you see these little marks here those are actually little tiny shreds of paper embedded in there and what will oftentimes happen is when you run this through those little shreds of paper will transfer to your white cardstock now oftentimes more often than not you can brush them off but sometimes you can't. And so what I like to do is just make it easy. And that is, bring my big boss over here. I like to just put my cardstock down and then put a piece of paper here and then here. Because, I'll actually get two out of this. I want there to not be any kind of transferring. No, this is the way I do it. Duh, I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want this to transfer to my white cardstock as I'm running it through. So this is ready to roll. And uh, yeah, Jeanette was just over here die cutting for me. Hey, Jill, I'm glad you're here. And she will attest to the fact that it's a lot easier to just do it this way rather than having to, you know, brush off all of those little pieces. Now, this is, I'm having to kind of push, 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 because this is a tight fit. Ooh, boy, a little heft there. Whoopsie. Oh, that was just my ruler that fell. Okay. Hey Susan, I'm glad you are here. So, let's see. Let's pull this through and let's see if I need my dye brush or if it will just, and you know, actually I need a little receptacle for all of my bits. Let's see, ah, here we go. You know, when you have these intricate dies, you're gonna create a lot of little paper shreds, um, and they could be seen as um, confetti or not. <laughs> now, you can see by looking at the other side, everything looks like it's come through pretty well. I might need to run it through one more time. Let me just give it one more pass, because right in the middle, it looks like it maybe didn't go all the way through. So, before you start pulling this out of the die. It's a good thing to just flip it over and see. If you can see, that looks a little bit like it didn't quite go through. So let's just run it one more time. I almost ran it through a second time and I thought, oh, let's just go for it. But no. sometimes you're just better off to do it. And you know, with the new Big Boss, I don't have to do that a lot, but I will say with these super intricate dies, you oftentimes do. And I'm actually gonna run it through the other way because I do find that when the when they're long dies, they actually will typically give you a better cut when they go through lengthwise. 
And that has to do with the way the um, pressure, um, whatever you call them, they're not pressure points. Um, the things that squeeze the machine together, the bearings, I think they're bearings maybe, something like that. Anyway, those things are lengthwise, and so when you put your die through this way on a long die, it typically will cut through better. And yeah, now you can see that they're really, really defined, and that's what I'm looking for as I work to take this out, you know? I think I will just make life easy and go get my die brush, so one second. I take the little foam piece that you get with your die brush, and I still have the old one, but the new one has the, um, is part of your pick, take a pick. Um, but I like to take, your take a pick die brush comes with this little foam mat. But I like to put this foam mat into one of our stamp cases because then it's gonna contain all these little shreds. And, I want to contain these shreddies as much as I can because that is just a lot easier to deal with than have them all over everywhere. Okay, so we'll get a few more out of there and then the rest will come out with take a pick, which I also did grab. Here we go. So notice I can now take this and just tap it into my bin. That is a lot easier to contain than having to do it any other way that I have found. So let's just poke these through. Let me take a second. Now, this comes out beautifully from any kind of like a foil sheet. I'm actually using cardstock this time. And I purposely used the thick cardstock because I want it to have a little bit of heft, and I do find that the, the uh, regular basic white is gonna be a little bit thin for what I'm doing. I don't want it to rip or anything as I'm working with it, because I'm actually gonna color this. I'm gonna color this with blends. And that's the other thing, you know, when you're working with blends, um, you can use basic white, but the thick whisper white just is a little bit heftier. Now look at that, how pretty. Now what I am gonna do is flip this over and just run that on the back. Just see if I can get those last few little bits out. And I want these out. Okay, so that is done. And I don't need these I need my big boss still. I don't need these dies anymore. Let me show you what we're gonna do. Um, where'd I put the dies? Here we go. We're gonna do something kind of fun with this. And that is, we kind of have a blank slate with all of this basic white cardstock. What I'm going to do is pull over my And what I've done is I've just grabbed a set of blends that I think would look pretty like bright, springy, summery flowers. What I'm gonna do now, I have all my little die pieces out of there, and now I'm going to take the brush tip. I do find it easier for this, and except for some of them, I'm gonna use the, the smaller. And I'm going to just come along here and I'm going to color in all of this style flower with my Flirty Flamingo. And I am using the dark Flirty Flamingo. And let's see, there's another one over here. And I'm just going to the edge of the petal because I'm gonna come in here with my different shades of green and that is how I'm going to color the leaves. And this is gonna give you another way to use your intricate dies. 
that's just really pretty and really fun. This is the Dark Highland Heather. So you see I've got the pink and now I've got the purple going. Now look at that. Look at how nice and bright that is. It's gonna give me some great color. And this is that little four petal flower. So I can kind of find that along the way here and just do an outline. Now I'm not actually gonna go too far in the center because I don't actually, I'm gonna cover that for the most part. I'm gonna put a, uh, a label in the center so I don't really need to go way down in there. Now I missed this one. Let's see, any others? Oh, here's that four petal. There's that four petal flower. So this is a little bit like paint by number. I don't know about you, I loved that when I was a kid. Paint by number was so fun. I used to get some of those for Christmas sometimes or if I'd saved up some money and I got to go to a store to use that, it was, Awesome. Oh, you know what? I used a light Calypso Coral. I meant to use Flirty Flamingo. So now I'm gonna come in here with Flirty Flamingo. Ooh, look at how bright that is. And I'm gonna color these little tiny flowers with Flirty Flamingo. And let's see, there's another one. So I've got Flirty Flamingo and I have um, Calypso Coral both. It's gonna look really good. Now I'm gonna come in. Oh, I've got more. But wait, there's more. Bring that one in. Then I am going to, oh, there was one I needed to go back to, this one over here. So I ended up using more of the Calypso Coral, or I meant to use more of the Flirty Flamingo because that's my card base color, but you really can't tell me. See, I'm just gonna move this over to kind of help my eye. And now I'm gonna take two different shades of green, and I'm just going to hit, this is the Dark Soft Seafoam, and it's a nice, cool green. I don't want anything too, too dark here. And then I'm going to mix it up a little bit, but then I'm gonna bring in some light old olive. So I think the um, key when you're using greens, and you have a lot of greens like this, is to break it up a little bit. So it's not overly, you don't want it too matchy-matchy. Um, I mean, when you look outside, there's so many shades of green on any given day when you look out your window. So that's kind of that thought process. Now I'm gonna come with the light. I believe this is light. Yeah, this is light Old Olive. You know, Pear Pizzazz is the light version of Old Olive. And so, this is actually, I need to probably replace this one. Um, because we don't have Pear Pizzazz Stampin' Right uh, blends, I find that what I'm wanting to use, Pear Pizzazz, if I just go with the light um, blend, it will pretty much deliver what I'm looking for. Now you can see how I've got two different shades of green going here, and that really adds a lot of kind of variety to my um, little set of leaves and my little floral arrangement, as it were, here. So let's see how that is looking. I think that's probably all I need to color. I can come back to it if I need to. So let me show you how we're gonna layer this up. Let's flip that over, here we go. So now I have, you can now see where I'm going here. <laughs> so look at how that looks when you put it on the black. So this is what I'm wanting to do. This is where the magic starts to happen. So we're trying to achieve a little bit of wow factor. So let me pull in, I did not put that away. Let's see. You know, may God forbid that I would ever put something away. It's just not something that comes naturally to me at all. So here is my 
bone folder. And what I am going to do is I'm going to adhere these together and then pop this up on dimensionals. This is going to be laid down directly. So let me put these first, getting little shreddies, which I don't want. And you can see how these kind of soft, kind of bright colors really, really pop when you put them on that black. Pink and black is always a really nice um, color combo. And it really brings out, let's see, brings out the best of both. I think it's that super high contrast that works so well with the pink. This may just, oh, see. When, you're, when your uh, liquid glue is beginning to run out, and you can feel there's still some in there, but it's not really coming out easily, use the bottom end, and it will come out. I'll, you'll get quite a bit more before you have to call it quits and toss that. Now, I am gonna go ahead, I think I'll go ahead and put this down first. Now, I need my gluey sponge. So, if you are fortunate enough to still have one of your, the Stampin' sponges that we recently retired, I keep one of those in a little special container. And this is my gluey sponge. Now, it has a handle on it, so I don't have to touch it. And this is, really, really excellent when you need to attach some kind of an intricate die. So I'm just gonna pull this and just dab. Now the other thing you could have done is if you had used the adhesive sheets. And if I'm typically, I just don't remember to use them sometimes. I love them particularly when you're using the alphabet dies. Now that has stuck that down admirably. And now, you might wonder why that white is in the middle, but I will show you what we're gonna do with that. So now this is ready to have some dimensionals. And really what I'm showing you here for Teach Me Tuesday is when you can color your intricate die cuts. Let me grab some dimensionals. usually have like a gazillion packages open. Let's see if I can pull that apart. There we go. So let's pop this up and then we are going to put a greeting in the middle and I think I like my greetings as much as possible to kind of reflect whatever my artwork is. And so this is a wow card. So I want to have a wow greeting. So let's see what we come up with. Put my little trash bin over here. So I don't have bits and pieces on the floor when I'm done. Sometimes this place looks like a wreck when I finish stamping, but I think we're all in the same boat, you know? If you craft, you probably are used to messes. It's just kind of the nature of the creative beast or the creative muse, shall we say. Okay, so these I'm done with. I need to put the lid back here. I want to get the stage ready for my little, last little bits that we're going to do. And that is, we are going to bring Big Boss back over here. So, I'm gonna need a block for my greeting. I'm pulling in, in bloom. I love, love, love these really bold greetings here. And I think they're a nice foil. So I'm gonna do the You Are Amazing, which I think goes with this amazing look here. And we are going to put that on a tag right in the center. So let's go ahead and stamp this with Memento Black and see if we can create something really, really bold, beautiful, fancy, and 
with plenty of wow factor. That's what I'm wanting. I'm wanting wow factor because, you know, I'm not a big colorer, so even the few seconds, <laughs> maybe 60 seconds it took me to color this, yeah, this has to go to a special occasion because I'm a quick and easy girl. Let's bring Big Boss back over here. And... go with all of these bits here and what I want to try is sometimes when your plates get a little bit warped on one side if you'll flip them on the other it will help I want to use one of these little guys these are the Tailor Made Tags are only $22. These are amazing dies. I really, really love them. Um, yeah, the black cardstock, it really does make the medallion pop. So if you have, um, if you have uh, this vine design, this is another way to really make your die cuts really shine. And this is the kind of card you give somebody and they go, wow, did you make that? Uh, because it's very apparent this did not come from Walmart. Nothing against Walmart, but they don't have this kind of card in there. This is not a Hallmark card. This is not a Walmart card. This is a handmade card. And I think it's very apparent that it's a handmade card. So here we go. There's my die, which I'm going to put away because I'm being on really good behavior today and I don't have my little Dumahitchi over here. I have one of those awesome little things that has a magnet on it, which means that I can actually be sloppy and not lose my dies because I can just throw them on that little thingy. Okay, let me pop this over here. Probably need to come back in here and add just a little bit more color. So I think I'm going to pull in my, where did I put my, ah, here they are, my little basket of goodies here. You can see now where I'm going to put this that I'm going to add a little bit more color because these are not, these are showing and I didn't think they would. So I can just come back in here and add a little bit more color. Let's see. I think this is the Flirty Flamingo. Let's add that. And it's interesting how it really just, all of the colors just work so nicely together. And really, you can do this with any color. I think you have to start with your, your card base and then work from there. Because I was using Flirty Flamingo, I knew I wanted to go with kind of, um, you know, like a bright bouquet. So now, uh, yes, now that is going to go very nicely there. I'm still showing a little bit here. And a little bit here so let's pull that in and then I'm going to I think because this is already up on dimensionals I don't really think well you know what I probably should it would probably look better if I just go ahead and add more dimensionals I will say most of the time when in doubt with dimensionals say yes let me see if I can lay hold of just find here we go here's another and then I've got one well maybe two more little touches to bring this completely where I want it you know what I probably should do the ribbon before I stick it down look what I found isn't this beautiful 
this is that new Flirty Flamingo and Gold, let's see, Flirty Flamingo ribbon, and I am going to take this and thread it through my little tag here, and I think it's going to be just the perfect touch. So let's see, can I get it through? I think so. That, by putting it through, putting my loop through, and then pulling that, the tails, through the loop, then you end up with that very pretty little tag, like so. And I think, you know what, I could even do it on the angle. That's kind of neat. Instead of just doing it straight, maybe I can do it on the angle. That might be a little better. And then I have these lovely little tails, but I'm gonna leave fairly long because I want a lot of that ribbon to show. It's so pretty, and it, those silver, I mean gold sparkles. Whoopsie, that's not what I meant to do. Well, let's try it this way. There we go. And then let's do this one in the opposite direction so that we have true tails going there. Now, you are amazing, and I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of rhinestone bling, because I think it needs, just see how that shine, see how that little bit of shine is just bringing everything together? Can you see that? Is that coming through in the light? The beautiful, beautiful uh, flirty flamingo ribbon. We could do these lovely pearls, but I think that's a little bit too soft and maybe too much color. You know, sometimes you, you have so much color here. I think this is where the black and white really help to focus and um, almost like define the color in a greater way. So I think that really just some regular rhinestones, one like that are going to be the perfect touch. Now, these champagne ones might actually, they're kind of pretty too because they bring out the peachy. You know, I think that's actually even a better fit because it's bringing out the gold in the gold ribbon. So let's just see. Let's pull. Great big champagne rhinestone, boom. See how that picks up that gold? And then let's see if we do maybe like this and maybe like this. I think we're there. What do you think? You are amazing. And we've made a beautiful springy, summery bouquet of flowers with our vine design um, dies, and I think it's come out really nicely. And this is kind of shows you as well how, oh, I was frozen, lovely. What was this telling me I was frozen? I was going on and on. I wonder why nobody was weighing in. Um, just another way that you can use these Vine Design dies which are definitely not on sale. However, they are going away and they're retiring. They're on the last chance list. I think that there's a lot to recommend them. So there's the three shades, or not shades, the three shapes that you can see. So there's the oval, there's the um, circle, and there's the rectangle. And honestly, this also shows you, this is what it looks like when you don't add any color at all. This is actually the pearlized paper. This is white, thick white cardstock, and we've added lots of color to the oval. And then um, we have the, um, what do you call it, the pearlized paper again. And this one was actually done with, um, this was actually done with the um, sponge daubers. So that is it for today, Teach Me Tuesday, using your intricate die cuts in such a way that you can actually color them 
and really customize them, make them shine, give you a real wow look to your projects. So that is Teach Me Tuesday for today. I will be here with you live on Thursday, which is our big day for our, um, our half, not half, <laughs> free shipping sale. So a fun promotion for us all. I know I have an order that I will be placing on Thursday. And um, I encourage you to get your wish list ready so that when Thursday comes, you can just pull the, pl pull the you know, um, release uh, your order, have it ready to go or ready to key in. And if you'd like to place an order with me, I do have a host code. It's actually the host code up here at the top of the um, of my Facebook page. And if you prefer, if you just really don't like getting online and placing orders, you're just not that, you're just not keen on it, um, just text me or do an instant message and I'll be glad to place that order for you. We can just talk over the phone. You give me your order over the phone and I'll place it for you that way. So um, again, I will be here on Thursday. We're doing simple and stepped up stamping. I'm probably going to be featuring again some of these items on our last chance list because they're going away at the end of this month. Many of them are reduced in price as well. So don't forget to add to your wish list, your shopping list for Thursday, um, the Love You Always foil sheets and the Love You All, True Love, Love You Always, it's the Love You Always Suite. It's the Specialty Designer Series paper and the coordinating foil sheets, both are half price. So I think those are very worth having and I've given you plenty of ideas on how to use those. Again, if you are um, interested in my, um, well actually I have the PDF projects available for the Vine Design class. And I also have the PDF available for, where'd it go? Um, my, um, what's it called? Treasure, the treasure. The, the grandmother, grandfather one, the grandkids. Treasures in Life, I think is what it's called. It's a million dollar um, stamp, million dollar achiever inspired stamp set. That's a mouthful. Okay, I'm gonna love you and leave you. I got a lot of things I gotta get ready for mailing today and that's kind of been the, uh, the whole theme of this week is getting stuff packaged in, in the mail. Um, thank you again for, oh, it's still frozen again for you, Melissa. Wow, I'm so sorry. Let me know if anybody else is experiencing that. I've had a great feed today. I've not had any problem at all with my feed. I will say sometimes when you have that, it's real, it's always annoying when that happens. Sometimes you can refresh your screen, but sometimes it won't even let you refresh the screen. So that's just kind of, it, it could be Facebook, it could be your internet feed. I know that um, here in San Antonio, we actually had a really good rain during the night last night. So, um, oh, Susan, that's good to know. She, Susan's on the northwest part of San Antonio and her feed, she's not having any any freezing freezing up issues. <laughs> a little bit of freezing will be right, nice right now when we're in, our, in the 90s here in San Antonio. But I will say we had a fantastic rain during the night and it was a quiet rain, so it didn't wake us. But we woke up to have everything fresh and watered. We're not having to water the, the yard today, so it's good. Thank you again for being with us. Don't forget, Thursday is free shipping, and I will be here with you again at two o'clock Central Time for Simple and Stepped Up Stamping. What will Candy make on Thursday? I think it's gonna be fun. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care, and God bless.